Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and I'm the creator and owner of Threaded South, which is a streetwear brand. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a vintage hip hop tee. So if you do a quick Google search, the type of tees I'm talking about or you may have seen is like the Outkast, Metallica's, No Limit, TLC, those type of vintage hip hop tees. And uh, I just realized that I said a vintage hip hop tee and I included Metallica. Whoops. I'm also going to teach you different type of masking techniques to basically create a collage of your artists. Now in this example, I am using J. Cole because he's one of my favorite artists. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the tutorial. As you can see here, I have created a new document. It is 16 by 20 inches in the CMYK color mode and it's 300 PPI. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna type out our text and I'm gonna type out love yours. And I'm gonna make this larger, I'm gonna make it to be about 208 points. I'm gonna center it here on my document. And then next I'm gonna change it to this Belugu Moram font. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> and then for my swatches, I'm going to change my color to 939598. Now for the letters, I am going the letter L and Z. I'm going to change the font size to 310. And then also change the position of the font to be negative 60 points. And you'll see it in the next step here. So now I'm changing the position, the baseline ship, so that's negative 60. And I'm going to change the tracking so that it is negative 180. And for the letter Z, I'm going to also change the baseline shift so that it's negative 60 as well. Now I'm basically going to copy and paste this font here and I am going to type J. Cole and delete the L and Z. Now I'm going to duplicate the love yours and J. Cole text. And you'll see why later. So take one of your fonts here, well this one of your texts and go to Effect, 3D, and Materials, and, and Extrude and Bevel. And I'm going to change the depth so that it's all the way to the right. I'm going to turn on the bevel here. I'm going to use the all the defaults will stay the same. And then now I will change the rotation so that it's 1 degree. And then I'll change the next one to 0 0.5 degrees and the last one to be zero degrees. Now I'm gonna click my text here and go up to object, envelope, distort, make with warp. And I'm gonna change the style to arc upper. and then leave everything as is. And I'm gonna go down here to my J. Cole and apply the bevel effect that I used earlier using the same settings. Now I popped over here to Photoshop and as you can see, I basically create a same document size 
in Photoshop that I did in Illustrator. The same 16 by 20 and the resolution is at 300. Now I'm gonna pop back over to Illustrator and I'm gonna copy and paste each one of these layers into Photoshop and I make sure you paste them as a smart object and click OK. And now what I'm gonna do is just rename my layers. So for this one, I'm gonna rename it Love Yours Bottom and jump back to Illustrator. And now I am gonna apply the warp so that it matches with that layer. And I'm gonna paste it as a smart object into Photoshop and rename it Love Yours Top. And now I'm just adjusting it so that it fits perfectly aligned with my bottom text. And now just readjust it so that it's at the top of your document. And do the same with the J. Cole text layers as well. Paste them as smart objects and rename them. And now I'm just linking them so that if I move one layer, then the other layer moves with it as well. And I repositioned it to, the, to be at the bottom of my document. And now I am adding a solid black layer all the way at the bottom so that you can see the effects that are applied. So now I'm just making these others layer, other layers invisible while I work on the Love Yours bottom layer. Double click it to bring up layer styles. And the first thing we're going to do is create an inner shadow. Change your blend mode to overlay. Change the color to be 000101. Change the opacity to be 34%. The angle to be 40. The distance to be 49. The choke should be 40 and the size should be seven and then change the quality to this little squiggle one <laughs> i forgot the name of them in the second row now we're going to make an inner glow now change this color to be white and keep it at color dodge 35 percent and change your choke to zero and your size to 29. Go to satin and we are going to change this layer to overlay and the color to be 000101. And we're going to change the opacity to 82%. Now change the distance to 160 and the size to be 51 and change the contour to that one. And now go to gradient overlay. Change this blend mode to pin light. The opacity, leave it at 100. And now we're gonna change, we're gonna add multiple stops. So for this first stop, we're gonna use BE, BE, BE. For this second stop, we're gonna use six, eight, six, eight, six, eight. For this third stop, we are gonna use C2, C1, C0. And for this next stop, we will be using the color 626362. Six, 
And for the next color, we will use A, D, A, 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 B. For our second to last color, we will use 959595. And then for our last color, we will use 303030. And then all the rest of this stays the same. Now we're gonna add a drop shadow. Change the color to B2D7E7. Change our blend mode to pin light. and our opacity to 93%. Our angle should be negative 85. The distance, distance should be 33. The spread should be zero. And the size should be 88. And now we're gonna click okay. And now we're gonna go to our Love Yours top layer and we're gonna apply some layer styles to this one as well. Let's start with Bevel and Emboss. So for our highlight color, we're gonna use white. And then for the shadow, we are going to use 030403. And now change the technique to chisel hard and the depth to 313. Change the size to 18 and the angle to be 48 and the altitude to 16. And then change it to the gloss contour to that one that I chose. And now change the opacity to 99% and the opacity for the shadow to 80%. Now we're gonna add a stroke and we're gonna change the fill type to color and we're gonna use black and then change the size to 13. The position should be inside and the blend mode should be hard light. Now we're gonna do inner shadow and change the color to 113F4A. And change the distance to 29, the choke to 50, and the size to 38. Change this to linear burn. and change the contour to this one that I'm selecting. And change the noise to 79%. Now for inner glow, change it to overlay and the color should be white. Change the opacity to 95%. The source should be edge and the choke should be 73%. The size should be 29 and everything should remain as is. Now we're gonna go to satin and we're going to change the color to 000101. And leave the opacity at 82. Change the contour to this one that I'm selecting. I forgot the names of these, so that's why I'm saying it this way. Now we're gonna go to gradient overlay. 
and change this to multiply. And now we're going to add some stops. The first stop will be 414141. The next stop will be C8, C8, C8. The third stop will be E3, E3, E3. And then our last stop will be 919191. Nine, one. Now we're going to add an outer glow. Change this blend mode to color dodge. The opacity should be 100%. And change the color to D7EFF7. And change the size to 15 pixels and then change the contour to that one now we are going to add a drop shadow change the color to zero three zero four zero three And change the blend mode to linear light and the opacity 52 change the angle to 48 and the distance to 13 the spread will be 0 and the size will be 152 change the contour to this one that I am selecting and then click on OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the J. Cole layers and I am going to right click and click on copy layer style and apply it to the same top layer from the J. Cole and then go back to the bottom layer and copy layer style and copy it to the bottom. And then I'm going to remove the drop shadow from the J. Cole layer. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm just scaling the layer effects to 50%. Now I am going to open up my first image of J. Cole that I'm using and I'm going to create a new layer and grab my brush here and I'm just making it larger and I use my eyedropper tool to select the color of his hoodie so that I can cover over the interlude text and now I'm just naming it and I converted it to a smart object and now I will drag and drop it over into my document and now I'm going to resize it but I'm also moving this layer underneath my text layers and placing it within a group called images. And then I'm also gonna place the text within a group as well. Now I am just resizing my image. And now I'm creating a mask and grabbing my brush tool. And I'm gonna change my flow so that it's not as harsh on the edges. And I'm gonna make sure the black is in the foreground and I'm gonna brush the edge away using a soft brush. Now 
Now I'm going to open up my next photo that I will be using, which is coal on coal in, in yellow sitting on the house. And I am renaming my layer and converting it to a smart object by right clicking the layer and drag and dropping it into my file. And now I'm just adjusting it and positioning, positioning the image the way I want. Now I'm changing the, this layer to a lighter color. And then I'm also going to select subject. And this cool tool selects the person that's in the image. And now I'm just taking my pen tool so that I can select the house part because I want that to be included as well. I just don't want the sky and the trees in my image. Now I'm adding this selection to the already active selection. And so now I am going to mask away the sky and the trees. Now I'm gonna get rid of my active selection, but I'm gonna go back after I finish adjusting the placement. I'm gonna go back to my brush here and I'm gonna take out part of the roof. Now I'm gonna go to my next image, which is Cole on the Slam magazine cover. I'm gonna use that same subject, select subject that I used earlier after I finished naming it and converting it to a smart object. And then I am going to include that selection of the basketball that wasn't included. And the thing that I like about doing these type of shirts is that the outlining or the masking doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's great about these like vintage hip hop tees. It's like they're a little bit messy, so it doesn't have to be real clean cut. So now I'm just dragging this image on over to my T. And I will reposition this image where I want it. I'm taking these both together and I'm making them larger. And I'll change this layer to a lighter color as well. for the blend mode. So now we're gonna move on to our next image, which is Cole in the crown. And bring it on over to my t-shirt. And place it and resize it.
Now I'm gonna change this layer to color dodge. And just like the other images, I'm gonna apply a mask and mask away the edges. And I'm gonna go on to my next image, which is him at a concert and rename it. And for this one, I want to change this image to black and white and convert it to a smart object. I'm gonna also select the subject and apply a mask and drag and drop it over into my t-shirt image and resize it as well. And now I'm gonna change the blend mode for, to lighter color. And also mask away the bottom portion. Now we're gonna take our last image, which is the off season logo, rename it, renaming it and also converting it to a smart object. And I'm using my pen tool to outline. It's a very rough outline. It doesn't have to be perfect. And creating a selection from it and masking that out. Now I'm just duplicating this and placing it on to my vintage hip hop tee. And again, I will resize it and place it where I like. And something you'll probably also notice that in the photos in my introduction, you can probably tell that the, uh, the off season, I didn't really mask out the edges that great because I did get the t-shirt printed the end that it doesn't have to be perfect so but if you're the type of person that you like for your stuff to look real clean and and look like it wasn't like a mistake then of course go back into your image and double check and make sure you mask out your edges Now I am going to take the some of the lyrics to the song and I'm going to make a text box. I'm going to change the color of the text to EDF 8FB. And I am using this particular font. I think it's Perant. I think that's how you say it. So now I'm just typing some of the lyrics. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. And I am positioning, positioning the text where I want. Now we're going to edit transform skew. And I'm gonna put it at a nice little angle.
Now I am adding a layer underneath the text because I wanted some of the text to be seen. So I'm adding a little bit of a little dark shadow here underneath the text so that it doesn't blend in with it with this shoe. Now select your images and your graphics and place it within a group. And I named this design. And now I am going to open up my distress textures. And remember all of this stuff is in the description, the links to the images I use, the links to the fonts I use. I also, um, I added in any free alternatives. If I used a paid font, I included those as well. So everything is in the, in the description. Now I am going to bring over one of the textures. And I am renaming this texture one. And I'm changing this to linear burn and changing the opacity to 17%. I'm gonna open up this other texture. We'll drag over this other texture and rename it texture two. And I'm gonna change this layer to darken and 17% opacity as well. Now I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast layer. And I'm gonna change the brightness to 32. And now select the brightness and the textures layers and right click and create clipping mask so that the textures is only applied to the design. So here I took out my black background. So as you can see, I didn't mask so great on certain parts of the images. So now I'm just going back in and cleaning up my design a bit more because of course there are certain things that you might not see when you're designing something because you're on a computer screen. But when something is printed, then that's when all the imperfections are seen. Kind of like how I was talking about earlier with the off season part and I got the shirt printed and I could still see the edges of, of that image and I didn't mask it out so great. So I'm just going in, applying some shadows under the image. Cause like I said, I am using layer styles and really layer styles don't really show up don't really show up when you're printing. So you have to have something behind those layer styles when you do go to print. And like I said, most of these images are overlaid on top of the image. So that's why the layer styles work. And like for me, when I printed this, I uploaded it to my printer that I use and I sent them a PNG of this file. So now I'm just turning back on this layer so you can see how it would look on a black background. If you like what you saw today, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you want to grab some merch, head on over to threadisouth.com. See you next time.